for all of us, especially those who are running for office, to really stand up for what it is that we the people need, what we the people deserve, and what we the people will get. We will not take no for an answer. We need nothing less than an America and a world that works for all of us. If it doesn't work for all of us, it doesn't work for any of us. We are on one small boat here. And in this last week, we have seen so up close and personal what it means to have a world under the stranglehold of racism and violence and white supremacy. That is what we saw playing out here in this last week. The incredible stories that we saw face to face of Anton Sterling's murder and Philando Castillo and the incredible bravery of Diamond Reynolds, his girlfriend and her daughter, who narrated exactly what it is like to be murdered by police. And I think America right now is in a moment of shock and horror. And in this moment of incredible despair, we have a moment here, I think, to stop and say this can't go on. Because it was not only them, it was the long line that Rosa named some of Names, everyone from Freddie Gray and Michael Brown and Tamir Rice and Ramarley Graham and Eric Garner and Walter Scott and one after the other these incredible stories that are so powerful and moving that we cannot allow this to go on any longer and what we saw in Dallas is that there is blowback from the violence of racism that will engulf us all. No one is safe. While black lives are endangered, everyone is endangered. We must ensure black lives matter. And that's not only by putting an end to police violence. And as Rosa said, it's not rocket science how to do this. There are things we can do right now, so let me just say a quick word about that so we don't suffer from this illusion that we can't fix this. Instead of having police control our communities, communities need to control our police. black lives and we need investigators full time so that every case every death at the hands of police is investigated we don't need to wait for a miracle from the Department of Justice in order to investigate every murder every death in police custody and we can actually go beyond that you may know there are, or you may not know because nobody talks about it. There are many countries around the world where police do not carry guns. Imagine carrying our police. We need gun control because so many people are victims of that crossfire. But that gun control is not just for everyday people in the neighborhoods. We must apply gun control to the police forces that are occupying our neighborhoods as well. That's not only good for communities. It turns out that the police are actually much safer when they are not carrying guns because so much of the, of the death and the bloodshed is a result of fear. And it's fear on both sides. It's fear of people walking down the street who are carrying their guns. How much good did that
that gun do for Philando Castile, who was carrying a gun? It didn't do him any good, and that's usually the case. Having a gun in your home, it turns out, it's 22 more times likely, 22 times more likely to injure or kill a member of your household than it is to help you defend against an intruder. So this doesn't make us safer. And it turns out it doesn't make the police safer either to be carrying guns. And we know this from many studies. Many countries in the United Kingdom, for example, even after the big terrorist events they had a couple years ago, they are not carrying guns and they do not want to carry guns because they know it makes them a target. In the country of Australia, police got rid of guns in some of their districts, not all of their districts, and it turns out where they got rid of the guns, there is far less violence and the police are also safer and people are safer. our police. We need to address the fundamental problem of racism in our society for once and for all. So that Black Lives Matter not only to be protected from police violence, but to be protected from economic violence.
especially give a shout out for the people who organized this amazing gathering in three days. tell us all the time that we just can't do this, that it's just too complicated. We cannot make sure that black lives matter. We can't make sure that everyone has a job. Everyone deserves a job, not just a living wage job, but an actual living wage job, not just the promise of living wages. Everyone deserves not just living wages, but a job with living wages. We are declaring an emergency. An emergency for our economy, an emergency for our environment, because there's a thing out there called environmental racism. And it hurts people more than anyone. We are on the front lines. And we deserve health care as a human right for everyone. Which is 